One of the questions I get asked a lot from police interceptors is to debrief and talk about the 12 year old pursuit we had with a stolen golf in Bingley. It's really strange when you're sat here now and you're trying to recall an incident that's happened several years ago. Um, but this is one of the incidents that's stuck in my mind. Um, and I don't think it'll ever leave me. It, just, it was just such a good job. So I'm just finishing my meal at the police station and we're on alternated meal breaks. So the rest of the team, there's not a lot of us working at the time. The rest of the team are coming in for me as just I'm leaving. The camera crew from Interceptors say, right, we'll jump in the car with you and we'll go for a bit of a drive. And I'm just turning out of Nelson Street at the police station and a AMPR hit, which obviously you know what AMPR is, it's cameras that scan number plates uh, and tells us of the, the intel on the car. It's a certain camera, I won't tell you where it is, but it's towards the Shipley area, outlining that this vehicle's just been stolen. Um, and it's obviously outstanding stolen and it's on the move. At the same time, the loggers come through then saying, the radio bleeps and saying, we've just had a Hanoi burglary in the Shipley area. So we've actually got the AMPR result before we've got the log, because what the log, the log comes through, then they'll be typing and they'll instantly put that on the hot list. So it's come up as it's been stolen. Now, when this job came in, I'm probably a mile and a half from where this, this hit was. So I'm in 3.30, put my foot down, no lights, no sirens and I absolutely gun it and I'm driving towards Shipley and it hits another camera, probably another 350, 400 metres away from the first camera. And I'm giving the car some beans and there's a, there's a, there's a bit on Valley Road that I remember, it's a bit of an, a crest and adverse camber and hit it so fast that the car took off. It must have left road by about an inch, but then started drifting across the top of road. And at that moment, I knew that the road had like the shine on it. It's got the gloss on it, you know, um, it's wet, it's, it's, been, um, it's been cold, there's a lot of shit on the road at the time. So I know the vehicles themselves are tyres. This is why I'm telling you this, the tyres aren't going to grip as well as what they should do. So we'll make us way in towards the Keithley area because that's where the chain of events have, has led us to. With AMPR and then with Bradford CCTV, that's been filming it out. Now the route it, it took, it went off camera, so I know the rough, it's got three routes then when it goes off camera. I know the one of the three routes it's going to come back to, which leads on the path of where it's just gone. So it's got to come back the same way. So I go to the roundabout at Marley and I sit and reverse into the um, sports centre car park and I'm facing the opposite way to the direction of traffic on a roundabout. So then I've got all lanes covered. It then hits a the camera in Keefley and then disappears. So the route I know, it's going to come back Dalton Lane. So as I'm sitting there, there's, it's, I think it's three in the morning. There's nothing else moving on the road at the time. And then just at the top of my left hand view, I can see some lights coming into view. Uh, it's coming slowly, it's not coming fast, and it comes down to junction. But as it comes down to junction, it can look right. It can see my police car set there. So it's got a clear view of me and I've got a clear view of it. What I need to do at that moment in time, if it sees me and it, it freaks out, I need to be able to take it out as it gets to the left hand side of the bypass. I won't have it going up the bypass wrong way. So I instantly, in my head, I said to uh, Mike, the cameraman, I'm going to ram it. If it goes towards bypass wrong way, I'm going to ram it. Uh, it done, it goes round the roundabout the right way. And as it comes round, I can see it's a golf and it's a grey golf. I can't see registration plate, but I instantly know that's the car. That's the bandit car. Um, in order to cut it off, I go the wrong way then round Marley roundabout. And there's no other cars on the road. And the first thing that comes into view is a fucking truck. <laughs> Approaching roundabout, it's a 44 ton truck. Uh, luckily, the bandit car has gone in front of that and it's gone down there with road and it's seen me and it's an instant pursuit. There's no hesitation, there's nothing. It's, 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 it's off. Ben, tell them it's sponsored by Surfshark. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. It's a whale with a water ski. It's a VPN, virtual private network. It protects you when you're online doing stuff you shouldn't be looking at. <laughs> Surfshark is a VPN which encrypts all the information on your device sent to the internet. Have you used it out of the box? Yes, I still use it. I've started watching a couple of different things, but I'm still on Land of the Living Dead thing. The Walking Dead. That's, I can't, yeah, you know what I'm at. But yeah, it's so easy to use. Click it, turn it to America, and you can watch America's, I can't, can I say Netflix? Yeah. Ne America's Netflix, yeah, really good. If you're on holiday, you can change your location back to your home country so you can still watch the UK stuff when you're abroad on holiday. Your data is secure online because Surfshark, don't track or store, Surfshark look after you like that. I love you Surfshark. Use the promo code Ben Pearson for 83% off and three extra months for free. Protect yourself online from the cyber criminals, cyber thugs and everyone's cyber. Thank you Surfshark for keeping the lights on, big love.
What people don't realise is when they're in a pursuit, that bandit car is obsessed with a police car behind. And everyone that's watching this and either been in a pursuit or is interested in a pursuit, is it doesn't matter what that police car is doing behind you. All that police cars do is watch it and latch onto you. What happens is everything that's happening two miles down the road, the, we've got the units in order, we've got the stinger sites, we've got X-ray 99 coming, we've got the dogmen. And the idea being is wherever you're driving towards, we've got a big circle of steel wrapping around you at that moment in time. So when you think I'm pulling away from you, I'm driving, I'm beating you, you're not because as soon as we can still see you, we've got a plan in place. So the reason I told you about tires earlier on is because I sent, went down Airworth Road and just before you get to the end of the junction at Airworth Road, there's a speed bump. And I remember hitting the speed bump at 80. And as my front nose landed, as soon as my front nose landed, I took my foot off the throttle and put my foot on the brake. And the wheels locked up. And what you won't realise, well, you might now if you watch the video again, I skid straight out of the junction. <laughs> so we're coming to a T junction. It's only like five, six mile an hour. But he goes straight out of the junction, turns right. And I come screaming out of the junction, but my wheels are locked up. But it actually did look like I'm driving out of the junction but I'm not, I'm actually skidding out of the junction because I've lost a bit of control of the car. All it means is that you're trying to do so much at once. You're trying to get the vehicle in sports mode. You're trying to look at the bandit driver. You're trying to get your crit positioning. You're trying to radio up on four stops, but you're trying to radio up on local Keefer channel and get everyone. So you, your body and your mind are trying to go through a lot of things. It's not just about driving and putting your foot down. Vehicle turns left on Bradford Road at Rilsden and he guns it. Now, I've, I think it were a 1.4 Golf. Um, they're not a fast car, but they're a smooth car for what they are, and they're quite a quick car. Every car now is going to 130 miles an hour um, on a long run. And I remember him cutting the corner on Bradford Road towards Riddleston and he, um, uh, at the back road towards Bingley. He cut the corner, and just as we dip down on the main bit of road, it's a 40 mile an hour limit and it opens up. And I remember looking down at the speedo and it were 90 and it was still gaining speed. Now, speed to a, a traffic cop, there's, there's no such thing as really dangerous or not dangerous. You can drive as quick as you want. It's like driving on a, on a, a runway or whatever. You've got to look at what they're driving and how they're driving in their vehicle dynamics. Now, at the time, he was flat. His vehicle wasn't doing anything out of order. It was well balanced. He went into offside at carriageway, so I followed him. And the reason you do that is because when he goes back to the near side at carriageway, anything that coming in the opposite direction you can see a set of lights in lane one, coming towards you, but then a set of police car lights in lane two. So in theory, you get a wall coming towards you. So mentally, they'll shut down on the brakes and start slowing down. So I'm always a staggered position then, up to 100, I think it was 105 miles an hour in a 40 mile an hour limit. Now that's not that bad, we've gone a lot faster, but you're still thinking 40 mile an hour limit, that's still a fast drive. If someone pulls out, if someone edges out, if you hit someone, it's fatal. If you hit another car, it's gonna be fatal comes over the crest of the road um, to Swine Lane and it goes in towards Bingley. Now this point is when it goes in towards Bingley, you've got a bit of an adverse camber on the road and the road is slippy and you can see the back of his car starting to twitch. You can see he's pushing the car out of limits and he doesn't know what oversteer and understeer is. So when he's going towards a bend, he thinks that if he just jerks it like that, the car's gonna grip on the road and you can see the car starting to lose a bit of traction. We chased the car into Bingley and I think we're hitting 80 miles an hour then in a 30 mile an hour limit. I can see his driving's getting a bit more raggy. He started, to, and this is where we look at it in, in the police car, the pressure's getting to him. Now they won't ever say this, but the pressure of having a police car directly behind you in a, in, when you're in a stolen car in a high speed pursuit, there's a lot of pressure on there. Cause you know, it's like instantly when someone gets behind you on a motorway and they're trying to get past, you know, dickhead in a BMW or whatever. In the Audis now, the old drive. <laughs> Josh, have you got an Audi? <laughs> so as we're coming into Bingley, it goes down to a 20 mile an hour limit. My radio, police radio on the stalk, because when we sat in the police car talking, my radio backs up and it just, it freezes, goes off. No one's getting any comms from me. And I've got to get the helicopter and stinger units in order to be able to box this car in. But the radio on four stops goes. So I've then got to manually change my radio at 80 miles an hour pursuing this car. I've got to look down. I knew you might say it's dangerous, but I have either got to abort or I've got a flick. So I've flicked over two channels, changed my channel, and then we're, we're heading towards the 20 mile an hour limit. And pubs are all shut, but you always still have some revelers out on bits of road because there's some takeaways that are always open. He hits the speed bumps, I think about 80 in the Golf. Now, speed bumps are designed to slow cars down. And you know what it's like when you go over a speed bump at 20 in a 20 mile an hour limit and your vehicle grind out. He hits it about 80. 
I'm coming into area at the time, and I remember going through the bottom of Bingley Main Street and going up and hitting first speed bump. Uh, my car didn't actually go over speed bump. I think my sump and all the other car just, the wheels lifted up and I think it just went straight over. All the wheels went up into the hub and it made such a thud. It, oh, it was horrendous. It was literally like the car had just broken half. At that time, the interior light came off. The radio jumped out of its place on the car. I think the door handle came off in my car. It was literally, my car was starting to drop apart. I hit the second speed bump, I think about 75. Uh, my car then took off out of the road and I think it must have got to about two and a half feet in air. But by this time, Bradford CCTV are watching. As the car hits down on the road, Mike, the cameraman from Channel 5, he flies up out of the seat and he smashes his head into the roof of the car, holding a massive, these are the little cameras, he's got a massive shoulder camera, flies up and smashes his head into the car, he starts swearing. I think I shout shit at that moment in time. So the control unit see the car, see what I've done, and ask us if we're all right and still happy to continue. This time, all my equipment from the back seat, half of it's in the front seat. All my books, my paperwork, my bags upside down, uh, my old lunch packet is all, there's empty yoghurt pots everywhere. They're literally cars running like shit now. All the dashboard lights all go red and yellow, engine management warning, brake lights, everything starts coming on. I should have, in theory, looking back, I probably should have said, yeah, I'm going to have to buy now, my vehicle's knackered. But I can hear the units have plotted up half a mile down the road with the Stingers. Um, it goes through Bingley Town Centre and we go down towards a Beckfoot School on us off uh, near side. My vehicle is st honestly then starting to give up. I'm limited start kicking in. There weren't a lot of power where there should have been power. It was starting to drift a lot. It cuts off to the offside going across the bridge over the dual white lines at 60 um, and then cuts back into the near side of the road and then ends up the hill towards um, Cotton Cliff Road. And it's just on my radio at that point, I hear stingers in place. And you've got this feeling in your heart thinking like, geez, thank Christ for that. The pursuit didn't bother me, the speed didn't bother me. But the, the fact of the, my vehicle packing up bothered me and started to boil my piss. Because if this car had got away and my vehicle had died, it's technically my own doing. And I, I should have really slowed down, but if I didn't slow, if I slowed down, I'd have lost it. And all you need is one car one car to be on the back of it. It comes round the road and there's a black or dark blue uh, police X5, firearms X5, hidden at the side of the road. And I only just saw it, firearms come running out and throw it stinging out. And it was a massive, successful sting on car. Literally, the tires were boof, boof. And it was like you could see on films, you just see this boof, boof on car, pull stinger back. I'm offside at the road, confirmed sting on car. Um, and you could see he's got nowhere to go at this point. We come down to A650 roundabout and it's just flooded with police cars. It's just like literally, you couldn't got a better stinger location to a better place to plot up. And I think at that point, 99 were just coming overhead as well. Comes down to roundabout, um, wrong side of roundabout. And then I go for it with him. I'm edging then, because what we're going to do is either I'm going to pit him at a slow speed and push him round and block his door, or I'm just going to get him to the side of him and just nudge him across gently to the curb so he's got nowhere to go. But luckily, his, I think his tyres shredded straight away, came straight off car, he had nowhere to go, he was running on rims. And just as he's bended round in front of me, I've just literally driven straight onto the side of him and gone dink and just shut his door. His door came open and just shut his door, so he had nowhere. So now he's got to get across from his driver's seat into a passenger seat in an exit vehicle. I think there were 12 bobbies, just literally lined up in cars, all literally getting out of the cars and stood there. Lads run out, run up embankment. I don't know why. Why would you run up an embankment? What are you gonna? Where are you gonna go? It's got a big fence at top of it. Just run down middle of the road like they do in all horror movies. So he's run out. Uh, I think Dave and Sam have run after him and gripped him round neck. And it was only when I saw Dave six foot two. I think Sam six foot two. They're both best part of sixteen stone, seventeen stone, big lads. It was only when I saw the silhouettes against the little silhouette. I thought, oh, okay, now something not right here. The room on the floor, and his voice were a bit like this. And then they're like, get down, get down, you're locked up, you know, cuffing him. And I said, how old are you? And he's 12 year old, 12 year old. Driving a car like that, 12 year, 100 mile an hour, 80 mile an hour through 20 mile an hour speed bumps. What are you doing? I mean, when I was 12 year old, I was watching Ninja Turtles. I was eating Frosties with one, I still eat Frosties with one milk, however. But cheese sandwiches with glasses of lemonade, and I picked my nose and ate it. And, but I went out stealing cars and driving like that, 12 year old. Now, I've watched this video over and over again. I've watched it on social media over and over again. And there's loads and loads of comments about this lad's driving and being, can I look at how he can drive? 
not blowing smoke up someone's ass. There's a level of driving. Yeah, you want a good driver, you want an expert driver, but for a 12 year old, if you were behind a 35 year old bloke, he's driving with shit. But if you were behind a 12 year old driving like that, he's driving for a 12 year old really good. The thing with a 12 year old is you just don't realise and you don't have an impact of how valuable life is. And I think everything at that moment in time is, is beyond your remits and you're indestructible in it, you're never going to get hurt. But I'm glad that that's one of the pursuits that always sticks in my mind. I'm glad I did it. I wouldn't change anything that I did. Uh, when he, oh, just were, when he got locked as well, I think crime in the Shipley area went down about 84%. <laughs> so, because he won't commit a fucking burger, he's a little shit. Um, obviously, we don't CPS decide what charges are going to run against him, and it goes in front of a, uh, a judge and an ADC punishment. We don't. We just put him there. So the lad got, I think, 18 months in a young offenders institute. I'm sure he were tagged as well when he came out. But yeah, for that majority of time that he were in, crime went down massively in Shipley area. But obviously like now, he's out and about and he'll be doing the same things now, but it's probably gonna be like 15 now. So he's probably, probably driving's gonna probably got a bit better. Yeah, he can reach pedals legitimately. It's not like that lad on uh, Indiana Jones and he's got like a box on his feet. <laughs>